coming to you from Orion Township. This is Oakland Leadership and I'm Penny Schultz. Thank you for joining us today as we visit with Chief Information Officer, Deputy County Executive Phil Bertolini. Mr. Bertolini is renowned for his achievements and was honored by the President Obama White House Administration as a Champion of Change for 2012. He was also named 2013 CIO of the Year by Crane's Detroit Business. Phil travels the country and abroad to present e-government best practice solutions, and he is leading the way with innovative answers in our rapidly changing technology landscape. His philosophy is build it once, pay for it once, and everybody benefits. Thank you so much for being here today, Phil. Happy to be here, Penny. Thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity for people to learn about what's going on in Oakland County. There's so much going on in county government, really the county in general, you know, as the economy starts to swing back. And we've just come out of the worst recession in my lifetime. You know, I, yes. I just can't imagine what people have gone through and families have gone through as far as the economy downturn we had. But there were jobs that were lost. You know, in one year in 2009, Oakland County lost 60,000 jobs. Incredible. In one year. Well, we're recovering quite nicely, and yes. our, our property values are starting to come back up. And, and we've managed pretty well at the county government under Elbrus Patterson, our county executive's leadership. We've managed our budget very well. We, we've, we, ha we do not have a deficit. We haven't had a deficit in many years. We're balanced all the way through 2021 Good news. based on all of our projections. We have a healthy fund equity, and we've done that because we are being financially conservative, and that's what we need to be. And we did all of that without laying off a single person that's from remarkable. county government. Now, the county employees, though, did take salary reductions. They took a 4% salary reduction. So they came to the table, and they, they did what they could do to help us manage. So we're, we're doing well. Uh, we've, you know, weathered some tough storms. You know, the stock market's not great as of today, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be better tomorrow. And what we're always looking for is what Oakland County is going to be tomorrow. And you are excellent out there in Oakland County, even with those cuts. Those empl the employees all continue to give excellent service. Yeah, they, they sure do. And, you know, there was that whole story about doing more with less. And people always say, oh, government, just do more with less. But in reality, we were doing less with less. There's just government can't be everything for all people. And what we found is there were just certain things we shouldn't be in the business of doing. So we believe in privatization. We've privatized a number of functions that's allowed us to manage our budget more effectively. And we also believe in the fact that if we don't deliver the best quality services, then why are we there? So I, mean, I don't know if you remember, but back in those days, government was talking about doing furlough days or- I do. You know, remember, they like, just yes. make your people stay home. But if our number one responsibility is delivering service to the citizens, if we're at home, we can't do that. That's right. So we found ways, we have four by 10 work weeks. In the IT operation, which is one of my main responsibilities, I flex time, I use telework. We've done a number of things to change the environment so that we're delivering better services through enabling technologies. So it's been a good thing and our, our leader, he, he always he says lead and get out of the way and it's, it's quite a philosophy, but it all stems from his philosophy, the fact that we need to provide the best quality services we can for the citizens, the 1.2 million people that live in our borders, and that's our main responsibility. And Al Brooks Patterson knows that, and every decision that he makes, he makes with that in mind. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because he doesn't always make the political decision. You know, and people always say, oh, he's doing it for politics, but that's not his way of doing things. His decisions are made for what's best for the citizens. Long term. So there are a number of times when, you know, he, it's a Republican administration, but there are times when the Republican Party's not overly happy with us. And it's not because we don't believe in conservative values. It's that sometimes we need to make the best decision and the right decision and worry about the politics later. And he's done that his entire career, which is one of the reasons why I work with him, because I believe in him. I believe in what he's doing, and I believe in the mission of Oakland County. And it's not the political thing, it's the right thing. That's right, and we see that time and again in some of the communities um, that were struggling had mm -hmm. a resource there with the county. And you guys have always undergirded the municipalities that you're responsible for. Yeah, you know, there's, that's an interesting point you bring up because I, I think there's a number of people in our county and maybe in the Orient area here that don't understand that there's so many shared services that are being taken advantage of between Sheriff us. Sheriff for one. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we use law enforcement services, we have yes. tax and assessment services, we have technology 
of the six, and there's 62 communities in Oakland County. I don't know if you. I didn't realize the technology. Did you know what the 62nd one is? No, I don't. It's Fenton. Oh, interesting. They actually annexed some land. The city of Fenton annexed land a number of years ago. So we have 62 communities. All of our communities in Oakland County use one or more of our technology services. I like that. And that's very important because technology is a heavy investment. Mm -hmm. And if we can make that investment and share it across a wider range of consumers, we can lower the cost. And that's what we've done for many years. And you do an excellent job. Thank you. And you take this out to other municipalities outside of Oakland County, but also outside of the country. Yeah, Tell um, us a little bit about that. Sure. So one of the projects that we started was G2G Cloud Solutions, or government-to-government -government cloud solutions. And what we were trying to do is provide technologies in a, in a more modern way to other communities that may need to consume them. So we provide e-commerce services to over 50 different governmental entities, many of them outside of Oakland County, that we provide. And they're able to take advantage of lower costs and enhanced ability to use technology and service their citizens. At the same time, we're then managing it from a central perspective. You mentioned earlier that mantra, you know, build it once, yes. pay for it once, and everyone benefits. That's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make that work uh, even outside of the borders of the state of Michigan. The problem is when you do business between government to government outside of the state, the laws change. So yes. that's been a bit of a hiccup for us. But I have been able to travel and, and talk to other people. And, and luckily, you know, my boss, he, he says, get out there and evangelize the word. And that's what we do. And I've been able to travel and meet with other governmental entities. I've been to Dubai. I've been to other places that talk about e-government services. We're doing a pretty darn good here. Yes, uh, we are. We've been in the top five digital counties in the nation for the last Incredible. 10 years. At one time, we were the number one digital county mm -hmm. in the country. And our website this past year won the number one county website in the nation. Now, those are all great things to have, but it, it talks about the underlying principle. That means the services that we're delivering digitally and the technology we're providing is up at the upper end of the range of what people need. So we continue to be advanced in that area, but we know we're always chasing the tail because the technology shifts so fast. Changes. Cybersecurity right now, it's, mm -hmm. it's hurting everyone. I mean, they're, they're not cybersecurity, but the actual hackers are out there stealing credit card information, stealing personal information, so and we're battling So you have to stay ahead it. of it. You bet, and it's hard to do, and but do we're you, investing. And do you partner with the Sheriff's Department, Oakland County Sheriff's, as sure do. the Chief Information Officer? Sure do. We Actually, the, the beautiful part of our IT department is there are no other IT departments in county government. Mm -hmm. So we service all of the departments and divisions and all of the elected officials in That's county smart government. smart business. Well, that also allowed us to leverage those technology dollars much more effectively. Yes. It's been and, very good. And you were in the technology department. You managed that for many years. Tell us a little bit about some of that experience, how it brought you to this position. Sure. When I started in the assessing world. I remember. Yes, you remember that. And, and I was with the Equalization Division for a number of years. So my first 12 years in county government, I was in the assessing office. And then I ended up being the administrator of Equalization. So I'm a certified level four assessor. and. And, but set, people don't realize that the whole property-based you know, land issue is a technology issue. It is. There's thousands of parcels of land, mm -hmm. and if you Tracking. don't have technology to manage that, you can't right. do it. So we were in technology much earlier than many other departments were just out of the nature of our business. Mm -hmm. So Brooks asked me, and it was December of 2000, I remember it like it was yesterday, he asked me if I would be his director of information technology. And my first response was, and you know me, I'm ultimately free thinking and, and, and willing to say whatever. I said to him, I hate it. I said, hey, Brooks, I'm not a technology person. I didn't have a technology background. But you're a manager. Well, I have a telecom degree from Michigan State University, go mm -hmm. green. But I, I didn't have a deep technology background. And his comment to me was very telling. He said, if I needed a technology person to run technology, I have a whole building full of those people. Wow. I need someone to get the people to use the technologies yes. we build for them. Yep. So for the last 15 plus years, I've been managing the world of technology for the county and making sure we're inculcating technology into the business as much as possible. So that's what I get to do every day. I love what I do. And it changes, your responsibilities yeah. change. You reach every out day. to different people all the time. About eight years ago when I first got elected, I asked you if you would come out and help us to get a technology strategy in place at Orion Township, and you were so helpful. You brought everyone to the table. Yeah, and, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. and the local communities inside of Oakland County's borders, they're all of us. You know, yes. I live in a local community. Yes. So the 62 communities are, are part of the county, so why wouldn't we 
leverage our assets and leverage our abilities between each other and share. Mm -hmm. So it's been very natural here, but if you go outside of, of Oakland County, it's not as natural. Hmm. There's local governments that don't get along with county governments and county governments that don't necessarily tr trust local governments. We don't have that problem here. We've all worked together for many, many years. You're transparent and you're a teacher. I, I've known that about you for many years. You taught me a lot about assessing administration all those years ago. You're a natural teacher and I think that helps. Yeah, you, it's, it's, there's a lot to be said about mentorship and mm -hmm. the ability to learn from others. And my mentor, Al Brooks Patterson, has been kept me under his wing for a long time to yes. make sure I learn what I need to learn about managing government in the best possible way. But my job then is to pass that on to others that I work with. And we can't be afraid to put the best and brightest around us and build them into a solid team. You can't be paranoid that someone's looking to take your job. Matter of fact, I hope everybody I work with wants my job because that's going to make they them work that. for it and get yes. there. And he's always said that, look, I want people to work with me that are the best mm -hmm. because it makes us all better. Well, I've been teaching classes for a number of years and it's a, a very rewarding effort. In my latest class, I teach a leadership class and I've really enjoyed um, seeing people think about leadership in a different way because many people don't think the public sector leads that well. You know, if you look at the uh, perception of the public sector, you've heard things like government is called the working retired or Some of the they're struggles. just lazy, you know, mm -hmm. oh my God, they go to their counter and they're sleeping or playing games on their computer and that really bothered me. So when I wrote the class, yes. I wanted to focus on the fact that we have to be even more of a leader than the private sector could ever dream of being because we have the people's needs. We're a service industry mm -hmm. and we satisfy the needs of the people and if we can't lead, who can? And you want to set that example for others. Yeah, it's I mean, so if we important. can't pass that down, yep. if we can't get others to do that, if you look at recruitment and retention of qualified people in today's world, right now, in the next three years, 30% of our workforce is going to retire. That's How huge. are we going to manage that? How mm -hmm. are we going to put succession plans in place if we aren't building the people around us and looking for the right people mm -hmm. to bring in? Our IT department just a year or two ago had 30% vacancy. That's incredible. We're down to 13.5% vacancy and we celebrated it. That's good. But when would you ever but think you're going to celebrate 13%, it'll go percent, up. right? It'll go back. Yeah, it will, but, mm -hmm. but it's tough. The young people are coming out with a different desire on how they're going to enter the workplace than the, the folks that have been around a while. So you have this generational mix. And a lot of competition. Change the game, you bet. There's a whole lot of competition. So tell me about the White House um, honoring you in 2012. Yeah, that was incredible. You know, uh, when, when I heard, I thought, oh, they're honoring Oakland County because I, I, I don't mm. believe it's me. I believe it's us. Yes. And our team, every time we get an award, we celebrate it as a team because it's really the work they did. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I play an important role in that, but it's not me. So when they asked me to come to the White House to present, I actually got to give a presentation on what we do at Oakland County. It was called an Ignite presentation. I love it. And if you've ever seen one of those, it was 20 slides in five minutes. Wow. So you're moving, you're, yes, you're cooking. Yes. And we got to be able to do that, but it was about what we're doing here at Oakland County and mm -hmm. the great work we're doing. But I can't do that. I couldn't stand there and be the face of that if I didn't have the 160 you know, people back at IT and the, and the contractual people, we have 50 contractual people that work with us, over 200 people that are trying to make this happen. And then I got to be the face of that. The team. So I was very honored. Yes. Obviously very honored. But it's not I, it's we. Yeah. And that's why that award, while it's always going to be very special to me mm -hmm. to have done that, it was really for all of us. What other opportunities did that recognition open up for you? Well, it's interesting you, you bring that up, too, because there's always this issue of where we sit with our peers. You mm -hmm. know, the, the whole issue of recruitment and retention, I'm always amazed, but there, there are candidates that will come in that have recognized that that all took place. The reason they want to interview with us is because they know we're on the front edge and that we've been, you know, awarded these wonderful recognitions. Yes. So that's all good for us, and I think that's good for us to maintain our team and to build our team. But also I think our citizens get a good feeling out of that because they hear about it and they know that we're technologically advanced. You know, citizens expect a whole lot more today than they, they really did just do. five years ago. Yes. And if we can't provide it for them, we're going to be the ones that are looked at that, why is that, why is that happening? So let me give you an example. We still have people that write us handwritten letters. 
We have people that email us. We have people that text us. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty soon we're going to have these young people are going to think it and they're going to expect us to have done it. Yes. Right? So this <laughs> is all changing around us. It is. Rapidly. We still have to supply the services. Mm -hmm. And it's just an honor to work for the people of Oakland County. You know, I'm, a, I'm in my 28th year with them. Wow. I never thought I'd be here 28 years, but I love what I do. And I think with my boss, the county executive, you know, he's been in the county executive's office, this is his 24th year, and he's looking to make sure that we continue to move the county forward for another four plus. So we're just looking forward to what we can do longer term for our, the citizens. Our county executive is doing an amazing, amazing job. You hear that amongst other counties and other states, and it's pretty remarkable how he's able to continue to raise the bar. Well, he expects it. a great deal. Yes. You know, and there's there's some great quotes out of there that said, leaders do not expect out of others what they don't expect out of themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you don't set high expectations for yourself, how can you expect others to achieve it? He models he's done excellence. That. Yes, he's done that. Yep, time and time again. My daughter was able to meet him at the Brooksy uh, Marathon. Yes, the Brooksy Way. Yeah, and she ran, and she was so excited. And right at the end, um, she finished it. That was the first one. And he took the time to meet with her and talk oh, yeah. with her. You know, what's interesting, too, is people don't realize, you know, it's not just a race. And I, I'm glad you brought up the Brooksy Way because mm -hmm. there's something about government and people that people lose track of is the quality of life side of things. Mm. You know, we can talk about economy and we can talk about other issues, but there is an issue about quality of life. And that's what that race represents. It does. The proceeds from that race actually go into Brooksy Way mini grants that go to organizations all over the county mm -hmm. that are doing wellness efforts and exercise efforts. And, and people apply for those and we, we've given out thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to organizations because people wanted to come on a Sunday morning and run a half marathon, yeah. a 10K and a 5K. So we're really excited about where that's gone. It's but so we're excellent. also excited about the product coming out of it, which is the money for the community. And we have been recipients of that. Our community programs for one of their races, um, the Dragon Dash, and also North Oakland Community Coalition, which is a group that is drug and alcohol prevention oh, for our excellent. youth. We've received that. I sit on that board. And we also, for a church, they received it for a mega sports camp. That's awesome. And I know it goes well beyond yeah, that, but that's sure just does. a sampling of who benefits from that. Yeah, and, and you know, I know it's a, it's a hardship on some people because that morning it locks up the entire Rochester Hills area, and, and we understand that. Mm -hmm. But we also understand the good that it does, and I think that far outweighs any inconvenience we have for a Sunday morning. And it knits us together as you a bet. community. It's so fun to cheer everyone on. It is. Yeah, I'm, I know we're excited about the next one coming up. I'm still watching. Maybe I'll participate. Yeah, I've run the 5K, but have I mostly you? work. Okay. <laughs> so I'm a volunteer. I'm not much of a runner. And that's okay. That's a yep. good thing to do. So let's talk about some of the emerging sectors um, in Oakland County, some of the economic incentives. Sure. And that's that's an interesting place that this county is in today. Mm -hmm. and it's because of a vision that Brooks had back in 2003, 2004. You know, we, we've suffered the, the, the success and the ills of the auto industry sure. for a long time. It's because we all our eggs were in that basket. So he asked the economic development folks to look into the top 10 sectors of the new economy and find the top 10 businesses in those top 10 sectors. So the top 100 businesses that are really going to move the new economy. And we didn't talk about auto, you know, the auto is still our bread and butter. Don't get me wrong. Right. And we love the auto industry. But we wanted to see what was out, what else was happening. So you talk about IT, healthcare, which is the fastest growing. Mm -hmm. You have, um, you know, nanotechnology, biotechnology, all the different areas. And he looked at the top 100 companies, and a staggering, sobering fact came out of that research. 60% of those companies had no footprint in the United States. Oh, incredible. So 60% of the top 100 companies of the top 10 sectors of the new economy weren't even here. Mm. So he sent his economic people, economic development people, off on a mission them. to pursue them. And I've even gone on some of the trade missions where we've gone to look for these folks. Mm -hmm. So I have some numbers for you today. I wanna, okay. If I could, I'd, I'd share like to hear that. You. So the, the, we just celebrated bypassing the $3 billion investment mark. So since 2004, we've had over $3.3 .3 billion in new investment from 371 companies from all over the world. Amazing. We're not just rearranging the chairs from around the state of Michigan. We're out there bringing people to the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So get this 37,000 new jobs and retained 21,000 jobs. Now here's the, here's the interesting is they we, we were forecasted to grow jobs by our economists and we're still forecasted to grow, but these are the kinds of efforts that actually bring those jobs in, and a company may come in with three jobs today 
and turn around and have 800 jobs five years from now. So this is exciting times for us. Yes. But there are a couple areas I'd like to focus on if I could is first is the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. We had over 100,000 people in our county that worked in healthcare already. That's quite a large people. number. And actually our largest employer used to be General Motors, now it's Beaumont Hospitals. I can believe that. And think about it. here's some numbers for you on that. 50 companies have come in since we in, set, in, in 2009 we started Medical Main Street, which is our healthcare effort mm -hmm. to rebrand the area. They've invested over a billion dollars creating 6,000 new jobs and retaining 2,400 jobs. So this is real. And you know, the whole issue of where to go to get quality health care, people say, well, go to the Mayo Clinic. Why do they go to the Mayo Clinic? Because of the reputation of the Mayo Clinic. Yes. We have major hospitals here and major hospital systems. They do more research out of Beaumont than most places, entire states do. And outstanding reputations. You bet. And we mm -hmm. have the Henry Ford system. Yes. You know, we have uh, Crittenden right here, and you know, all the things that are in our backyard. Mm -hmm. But all this good stuff is happening in the healthcare industry. And the university, Oakland University, built uh, the new division right. there. They That's sure did. They built a medical school. Yes. And they just, I believe, had their first set of graduates this past year. Very exciting. And they've had 3,000 applicants, and I think they only took like 30 students in the original class. That's incredible. It's the William Beaumont. Uh, School of Medicine at Oakland University and it's it's an incredible partnership with Beaumont Hospitals mm -hmm. and, and everything that we need to do. We have to shift the economy not because we don't like the auto industry because when the next recession hits which it will and the auto industry will have its ebbs and flows of, of building cars and, and their successes the entire economy shouldn't shift that way. How do we we're never going to be as in Brooks's words we will never be recession proof but will be recession resistant. I like it. And I think that's very important for our community. Yep. And for our young people. You know, many for many years our college students left the state of Michigan to go work elsewhere. And our goal is to keep them here. Retain that. And that people skill. the people that left Michigan over the last several years are they coming should, back. They should come back. And yes. why they should come back is this is where it's now the cost of living is low mm -hmm. and they can go ahead and make something. Yeah. And grow it here in the state of Michigan. It's a pretty exciting time. It's very exciting. Um, when we accepted property transfer affidavits, I was always amazed at the people that were returning. Mm -hmm. They grew up here, they went to school here, they went to go work somewhere else, but they always came back. They love Michigan. They well, love in Oakland County, Oakland with, County. With the lakes and the parks, we have the best park system we in the really country. We really do. Orion does. Yeah, and Orion has Beautiful. an incredible system. Mm -hmm. And so when you take the local system and the county system yes. and you put those together, they can pretty much do whatever they want. And if you think about today's government, you know, that whole recruitment and retention piece, mm -hmm. there's companies out there that are taking our young people and they're churning them up and burning them out because that's how business works in some sure. cases. What we're selling is a life. we have a quality place to work, mm -hmm. we have a quality place to live and play, education for and kids. you can be home with your family. Yes. And that's what Oakland County is really about. It really is. It's a family county. I agree, 100%. Um, so I want to just kind of wrap this up. I know we covered a lot of ground, but there's so much more that I know you want to talk about. So give us a few closing things. And if we want to reach you, too, tell us how to get a hold of you in case people have questions. Sure. If, if they have any questions, I'd be happy. They can email me at Bertolini P, which is B-E-R-T-O-L-I-N-I-P at oakgov.com. Or they can give me a call at 248-858-0815, and I'd be happy to talk, talk with them. Outstanding. The county is growing. Yes. We are keeping more of our young people today. We have businesses that are flourishing. We are still the home of all of the North American research and development for the auto industry. We are the home to major corporations and global, you know, Fortune 500 companies. We have a great deal of, we have over a thousand foreign owned firms Incredible. inside Oakland County. Mm -hmm. So when you think about all those things from an economic perspective, what do people say when they get their college degree, they want to go find a place that's vibrant, they want to have a place where they can get a job, and we all believe it starts with a job. Yep. If you have a job, you can buy things and buy houses and cars and pay taxes. Build which, a life. Yeah, you know, and, yes. and we, we, know, we live on taxes, and, and people always say, well, that's taxes are a dirty word. No, that's how we pay for the services exactly. that we provide. You want the police to show up at your house, we have to pay that bill. Mm -hmm. But all these things are happening in Oakland County, and we're doing well. But we know that we are a regional player as well. And there's so many regional efforts. We were involved in the Cobo Hall renovation and the auto show, if anyone went down there recently. Remarkable. That, re that remodeling of Cobo Hall wouldn't have happened if L. Brooks Patterson wasn't standing at the forefront saying yes. we need a, a financial accountability 
and we need to manage it, and we need a voting responsibility with Cobo Hall. He did that. He did. And so we are now involved in the Cobo Convention Center. There's the, the zoo, the Detroit Zoo, which is an asset for this county and this region. Everybody we are involved loves the in the zoo. regional zoo authority. Mm -hmm. The DIA, you know, and yep. I know there's people that are on both sides of that issue. Should we pay a tax? Shouldn't we? And the DIA made some decisions that, or that are questionable to some folks. Such a treasure, But though. it's a treasure for mm -hmm. this community. If you yeah. don't have culture, how can we have a well-rounded community? Exactly. Now we're in the water issues and the water and sewer. And, and we have people and, and Bob Datto on our team. Oh, amazing. Who's an incredible man. Yes. We have an incredible staff with Jerry Poisson, Bob Datto, and Lori Van Pelt, our CFO. But Bob is involved in the Great Lakes Water Authority. He's the chair of the Great Lakes Water Authority. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out how we're going to handle our water issues we do. here in Oakland County. And he's doing that, and really in the region. So we're not just involved in our 910 square miles and our 62 you're, communities. You're impacting. We are involved in yes. this region heavily, and we are involved in the health of the state. If you look at the number of jobs, 50% of all the jobs and 50% of all the businesses and the people live in southeast Michigan. So let's not fool ourselves. There's other parts of the state that contribute mightily but when you look at the concentration of jobs and people, it's Southeast Michigan. Yes. We have a role to play in the health of the state of Michigan, and we will continue to play that role under Brooks's leadership. So I'm honored to be here with you. I'm honored to be working for one of the, the most innovative people I, I've known in my entire lifetime in L. Brooks Patterson. And what we're gonna do as, as county leadership is we're gonna make sure we do everything we can for the people to make their lives just that much better. And we're looking not just at this year, we're looking at 5, 10, 15, and 20 years down the road what this county needs to look like. A legacy. Yeah. Yep, and I'm glad that you guys understand that. And the decisions that you're making, mm -hmm. you're leaving a great legacy. You bet, and I think we know that the gravity yes. of those decisions yep. impacts the future, and the future is everything we have. Thank you so much, Phil. Penny, thank you. This went so fast. It. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I'll have you back again, okay? I appreciate it. Thank All you. All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the program today. From all of us at Oakland Leadership and Orion Neighborhood Television, we thank you for joining us.